Hi, I like to talk about the GCIF, no, GC G, ground fault circuit interrupter outlets. G, they are typically installed in washrooms and are an essential safety feature. In my last video, I talked about this girl that was electrocuted in the bathtub because she accidentally touched exposed wires. This would have saved her. Unfortunately, her frayed extension cord was not plugged into a GFCI outlet. You can watch my previous video about it. Now I will demonstrate to you how this outlet saves lives. Is this the end of the lovable idiot? Well, before I put myself at the mercy of technology, let's test it differently. What the GFCI outlet does is that it senses the current. Any current that comes out of the live wire must return to neutral to close the circuit. If it comes out of the live wire but doesn't return to neutral, it means that it's going to earth through an unwanted path. The outlet would open its breaker right away to avoid the unwanted current flow. So if you are sitting in a bathtub full of water and you drop a toaster in it, the current would go to earth through the faucet or drain plumbing that are shorted to earth. The outlet would cut the power right away and save your life. Okay, let's test it out. It says test monthly. There is a test button. Okay, and the red light is off, so it's all good. Now if I plug in my wire, and short the live, which is the black wire, to the earth, which is the green, the breaker should pop. That wasn't the outlet breaker. The whole washroom breaker popped. Okay then, if it's a dead short, the room breaker opens quicker than the GFCI. Now let's measure my body resistance. It's around 300, 400K. So if I put a 330 kilo ohm resistor between earth and live, I suppose the breaker should open. This is a 330 kilo ohm resistor. Nothing. I guess I would be dead. But wait, human body also has some capacitance. Mine is around 4, 5 nanofarad. Let's say that also doubles the current. So I guess if I use a 100 kilo ohm resistor between earth and live to increase the current, this should pop. Nope. I guess I would be dead again. What's the current threshold? Trying 56 kilo ohm. Wow, what the f I would be certainly dead, I think. Okay, trying 10 kilo ohm. Oh, it popped. So that means 120 volt AC divided by 10 kilo ohm, it's 12 milliamps. What the actual f That's a very high and dangerous current. Okay, I bought this GFCI outlet so I can try it outside the washroom. And I connected a potentiometer between the live and earth to see exactly where it will trigger. Let's make sure we don't short anything. High voltage makes me nervous as f Let's check the potentiometer resistance. Pretty much 24 kilo ohms, which means 120 volt AC divided by 24 kilo ohms is exactly 5 milliamps. So these things are designed to trip at fault currents of over 5 milliamps. Again, it doesn't pop if your body is between live and neutral. It will look like a normal circuit. It only pops for currents over 5 milliamps between live and earth. I think 5 milliamp is a pretty high and dangerous current. But according to information, you start sensing electricity around 1 milliamp. I personally start sensing it around half a milliamp. 1 milliamp is pretty painful for me. As it goes up around 10 milliamps, it becomes extremely painful and can cause severe shock and muscle paralysis and death. 10 milliamp and higher, you won't be able to let go, which results in extended exposure to electricity that would result in death. Closer to 100 milliamp, it becomes very hard to breathe and there is a regular heartbeat that would easily end your life. Above 100 milliamp, you die. Breathing stops completely and there will be severe burning as an added bonus. Of course, all these depends on the length of exposure to high current. For example, in case of a 25 kilovolt electrostatic discharge, the current through body is way more than one amp, around a microsecond, but that doesn't affect a healthy person. But if it's a fixed high voltage supply creating high current, you won't be able to let go. So according to this, 5 milliamp is quite painful but not lethal. And with my body impedance of over 100 kilo ohm with 120 volt AC across my body, there will be only 1 milliamp of annoyance. 
So does that mean that I can grab power lines with dry hands with no consequences? But I know that if I touch live wires, I'll die, I think. So there should be a disconnect somewhere. Okay, let me check my body resistance and impedance. I'll run some current through my body using my DC 30 volt as well as 60 hertz 30 volt AC coming from my auto transformer. Dry hands 30 volt DC. It's around 0.1 milliamps. Dry hand AC is 0.14. Wet hand DC is around 0.6 milliamps. Wet hand AC is around 0.8 milliamps. Soapy hand DC it's around 0.8.9 milliamps. Soapy hand AC ow, ow, 1.3, 1.4. Ow. Tongue DC. Tongue is very low resistance, so the current would be higher. Let's measure it at 3 volts. Okay, tongue at 3 volts. Hmm. 0.4 milliamps. And AC 3 volts. Oh. 0.7. I don't get it. The GFCI breaker would hardly open even if I'm soapy. But I should die even if I touch the live wires with dry hands. Let's experiment a little bit with water. I have cold tap water, hot tap water, and soapy water. And I'm gonna put the live and earth wires in each one of them to see which one triggers the breaker. Starting from cold. This one doesn't trigger. Hot water. Okay, that one pops, which means that there are more chemicals in the hot tap water, so don't drink it much. And now, the soapy water. Oh, definitely. So, good news everyone. If you are in a warm shower and you drop your hair dryer in the water, the breaker pops. Let's measure the resistances running some current through them with my 30 volt DC. We know any resistance below 24 kilovolt triggers the breaker. Cold water. It's like around 1 milliamp, so 30 kilo ohms. Hot tap water, it's 1.5 milliamps or 20 kilo ohms, so it triggers. And the soapy water is around 30 milliamps, which means around 1 kilo ohms. So I guess the lesson is always shower with warm water and add soap for additional safety and make sure your hair dryer only falls into the water. Does this mean that Madison would not be saved even if there was a GFCI outlet? According to the report, she was in the bathtub and accidentally grabbed the exposed wires of a broken extension cord. According to my tests, wet hand, even soapy hand, hardly triggers a GFCI outlet. But then again, the currents wouldn't be in lethal levels anyways. We must be missing something. Let's try again. Different voltage and current levels may have different effects. I have my 30 volt AC here, and I wet my finger and measure the current through it. You see the current is dropping. It would save me. Basically the electricity is removing the moisture from my skin and making it more resistive. Okay, let's crank it up all the way to 120 volts. According to my tests, over dry skin it should only result in 1 milliamp of pain. Okay. <coughs> okay, let's try it. Of course this is very dangerous, never try this at home, okay? Um, I only touch it with one hand and the rest of my body is isolated from electricity, so the current is limited to one hand. Um, support my channel at patreon.com because my family could use the money after my demise. It's dry, right? The current reading. I can't hold it steady, too painful. Let's reduce the voltage a little bit. Okay, let's do 100 volt. Ready? Should be less painful. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. Uh, ouch. What is it? Uh, what, what the f? Uh, ow, what, what the f is the current rising? Ow, f seems like at higher voltage and current, the skin doesn't limit the current anymore. It is failing one way or another and its resistance is dropping, increasing the current. Yeah, Madison would have been saved if her extension cord was plugged into a GFCI outlet. Her skin had already failed. She had burn marks on her hands. The current would be high enough to trip the breaker.
Now let's do the real test. Does the GFCI open and save me? So I have my dry hand, GFCI and the wires. I don't think it'll open because it needs more than 5 milliamps unless my skin breaks, which I don't think it does before I pull my hand back from pain. So let's try it. Ow. Be a man. Ow. Sh this is nothing. This is nothing for me. Ow. I sh Come on. Ow. Doesn't open. Never ever try this at home. I'm doing a fully soapy hand to give it the best shot. Otherwise, there will be a hell of a pain. Okay, come on. Sorry guys, the pain is too much for me. But I'm sure it's it opened! It opened! Install GFCI in bathrooms, people. Giveaway time! For my viewers, I opened the tea shop. Tea shop? <laughs> Open the t-shirt shop at teespring.com. I'll pick two comments from my videos and award them two shirts of their choice. For everyone else, if I pass by you rocking one of these shirts, I'll run up to you and shake your hands. I have to buy one of those hand shuckers, or maybe make one. Also, like to measure curves? I like to give away one of these great and powerful Keysight 1000 series scopes to my patrons at patreon.com. Thanks a lot for your support and make sure to visit Keysight's channel for great knowledge on scopes. Click already.